Hello. My name is Christina and I'm with KilburnsCreations.com. I make several different, uh, let's say art projects, craft projects, and I wanted to show you some of my things. <laughs> One of the first things I, I plan on doing more tutorials on is beading. This is a beaded bracelet. Did that get focused? Okay, that's better. This one here is a bead bracelet that I did with the diamond pattern. It is out of a magazine. Um, it's made with 4 millimeter and 15 out and 10 out beads. I put a focus point on it of a larger bead of the pearl that matches the pearl. I put wire in through the here so that it will help hold its shape and stay clasped. I also did this one here, but I'm going to make the clasp be its focal point and put the big bead there. But it's the same idea. you got your 4 millimeter with your 15s and your 10 knots. My next one that I'm going to show you is my daisy bracelet. This is one that I also received out of a magazine. I should probably tell you first that the uh, magazines I vote by most often without looking at what's inside of them is the Bead and Button magazine and the Bead Work magazine. All the other ones, I look through it and see if there's anything I'm interested in it. Because they're usually not. But anyways, this is a lazy daisy chain. We made nine of them. Um, I did the five light and four dark since my dark colors were on the ends also. I put all them together. We did a triangle here out of the um, ADOTs or EVs, which one you are familiar with. They're about the same size. And then I used these little flowers to go on top and look like a nice bouquet. Um, I got these flowers from uh, Joann's, but they haven't been in Joann's for a long time. The newer ones that I bought, I do have, I did buy more so I could make more. Um, so we can try it and see if you guys all like it. Um, I got from Fire Mountain. For the clasp, I used a button with a shank on it. Nice little flower. And then for the clasp, I used a wrap around. This is just two links with beads on it. We wrap this around the bottom and it just snaps together. Let's see if I can show that to you again. You get them close enough, and yep, there it goes, just snaps it right together. And then that gives you a pretty good hold on that. This one here is one out of the newer books. Um, I actually done several of these, but I did change a few things on them. Not that big of a difference. But for these here, I used the 15 odds for peak petots and then I used 15 ounces for a base with petot just for it to stick out. I used the dual beads and then I used the Tyla, the T-I-L-A, and then I used Swarovski crystals. It has a slide clasp on it. Holds very good. This one is the same design, but it is a little different because it looks like these. I use little daggers on it instead. Um, and then the four, the crystal, Swarovski crystal that I used right here in the middle is actually a four millimeter. And since I used a bigger bead, I had to add a bead between the, these two duels. So it's the same idea. I did get the idea from the book and I just put my own little twist on it. 
but I can't take credit for the patterns I have. I'm not really one that can make patterns. This one here is out of a magazine. I call it Hugs and Kisses because you got the X's and the O's. Um, the O's are made with Swarch Creek Pearls. The X's are made with Swarch Creek Crystals. And then we have um, sea beads, 10 knots. You hold them together. Toggle clasp. It's really up to you what type of clasp you want. And then I also made some beaded Christmas ornaments. This one here. This one here I did get out of the Bead and Button magazine. It was a November or December issue. I'm not sh sure if it was two or three years ago, but it was on the front cover. That was one I just picked up because up I liked the, what was on the front cover. Yeah, well, I need the I need that one. I gotta have the pattern for it. <clears throat> and then these are made with Swarch Creek Pearls. Swarch Creek Crystals. And then I also have some Chez Crystals in here. And then I got uh, 10 knot seed beads. More pearls. It was pretty. Also, I had to do it in my own favorite color. I did one in burgundy. That didn't last long. I probably should do some more in burgundy. That went real quick for Christmas. But there's that one. And then I also like doing these type of Christmas ornaments. These are actually... Oh, what did I do with my paper? This is from Debbie Motif. I'm probably not saying her name correctly. This is one of her patterns that I got, but her name is Debbie, D-E-B, Mofeef, M-O-F-F-E-T-T, dash Hall. Oh, excuse me. This pattern that I have here with the snowflakes is called Frozen T Treasures. Um, she does have a copyright on all her patterns. So if you like this, you will have to go to her website and buy the pattern. And then maybe one day we can just do a video. Now these particular ones here, panels, they take almost three hours just to make the one panel. So they do take up a lot of time, but they are so pretty when they're all done. We've got the simple uh, teardrop beads here. Different panels. But she's got nativities. Um, I did one with cardinals on it. Uh, snowflakes. She's got um, lighthouses, whales. You really want to go and see her stuff. My next thing that I'm going to show you is this. This here is a pattern that I got. And it's from www.ib.com. Now, she was actually at one of the beach shows when I got this. This one is called Beads of a Feather. And you can see the pattern right here that I went by. And let me get my box over here. But I did have a little bit of problem with it because here I am doing the pattern. You can see it's right here. And then after you get it, your pattern all done, you're supposed to be able to fold it in half and it come together. Well, mine's not going to fold in half and be a long, skinny feather like hers turned out to be. So what I did is I went ahead and kept on going. And then I went and took the design that she had back here and made a back piece here to match it. So I, I like that idea, but when I put them together to sew them together, I still didn't like the edging. I mean, I'm going to be putting fringe and all that up and down the edging too, but still needed something more. So I am making a strap now. This is going to go to next, and then the, so this will be in between like a purse or a bag. Let's see here. Get this. 
So this will be in between the two and be a pouch. And then I'll put my feathers and charms. I've got eagle chimes, birds, Indian. We'll have fun finishing that one up. It's almost there. I've got to make the strap long enough to go around over the head. Uh, she's also got patterns. Um, I think the one is called Wild Thing. It's got zebra strikes, tiger in it, some leopards. I think there's a peacock in there. And then the other one that I bought has oriental dresses in it, which is very pretty. Now I'm going to show you some wire wrapping that I've done. This is a wire wrap piece. This is a basic simple. I will be making some more of these on so you may watch and see how I do that. This one is a bead so there's a hole all the way through it. You've got your copper wiring. Um, it started with uh, three strands of copper wiring. I believe it was 20 gauge and then I got uh, 28 gauge for my wrapping wire. Um, there's another one over here. Just show you the difference here. This one here has a hole that goes through it this way. This one's concert, concerted, concert, concerted that is a pendant because of the hole being up there and nothing down through here. I got this I had a craft show, or not craft show, beach show, and I saw this and thought that was pretty gold, and that would be really pretty if I used some gold wire to make a bail. Well, when I bought, brought the gold wire to it, it didn't match. The copper actually looks better with it. So I went with the copper, and we put it through. We did our wrappings and all that. And then I just mirrored each side. I did each side at the same time. I mirrored this one and this one that went the same way, just the opposite side. So it turned out very nice. I'm I'm quite happy with it. And I have a lot more. I'm working on a dragon bracelet right now. If you go to my Facebook page, it's under Tina Kilburn. Um, I did post some uh, pictures of them. The first one that you see, which I believe is a purple dragon eye, that one's already sold. Um, nobody's claiming the red one yet. I haven't put it on my um, website yet, so. But I did take pictures and put it on my uh, Facebook page. I also play with Palmer clay. These things here are quite simple. This here is just a circle that I cut with a cookie cutter. I put findings on top of it. This is actually a bead cap. These here are bead caps. And then these little ones here are spacer beads. And I put them on. I baked it. I coated it with the uh, clear embossing powders. And then I added my gemstones to it. This one is kind of the same idea, but these are actually beads. They have holes that go this way and this way. And I like the copper look. It kind of looked like Indian-ish, even though more most Indians use the silver more. And then this is a um, bead cap in the center. Now this one here is a mold. It's a push mold that I did. And I uh, popped it out of the mold. I put the green on it to on it and then I put all these real thin bendable um, gears onto it and trying to wrap it around and all. Now this one here I'm not quite happy with because I need to put another coating some type of coating on it so that these things don't grab and you can hear that click right there and uh, so I'm still working on this idea But it's cute and then the ones that most people are really liking are these beach bracelets that I've been making I do a beach scenery you know sand water sky and um, 
this one here is actually a tutorial that you have to pay for. Um, if you need to need me to, I can look it up and find out where she's at, what her link is, and let you know. Um, <clears throat> but you know, and anyways, we made the beach scene. I cut my beads out. And then I uh, layered them, got my holes in them, and it's double strong. It's with the elastic, elastic. And then I put some of the Lisa Pavlaka uh, Magic Gloss on it. And then I put these charms on it. This one was a charm. I just clipped a hole off the top. Um, this one here was actually a bead. The hole goes through this way. But after it all set up and everything, um, you could still be able to get your fingernail on it, and I was afraid it was going to catch. It's not going to catch now. I put a second coat of this on it. And I'm quite happy with it. I got the beads, I believe, from Michael's. They kind of look like a water and sand mixture, so I thought those would be perfect for it. But yeah, this is made with a bead. This one was a charm. Bead. Charm. Bead. And then I also did one with all turtles. I found these little tiny turtle beads at um, Michael's, I believe it was. And I uh, thought they were so cute. So I used them as my spacer beads between them and put the big turtles on for your focal point. But this was uh, done out of polymer clay too. Then I also did one like this, where we cut the center out and put a bead in between it, so it's held between the front and the back panels. <laughs> so, and then I just got chip beads for it. Um, when I got the idea that was for the seahorses and then I tried other ones and I actually need a bigger bead because like the um, turtle it takes up more space so I actually need to get a get a, a cutter that's actually bigger with the same idea and then a cutter for the inside that the turtles will fit into okay. I do have some more of those started but I haven't finished them yet and then some of the ladies liked those so much that they were wanting earrings and pendants. So this one here, I was thinking of turning into a pendant. This is what it looks like before it comes out of the, um, after it comes out of the oven, oven after it's been baked. And you put your holes in it, do a whole lot of sanding. Still needs more sanding on it. Yeah, and I was going to put one of the turtles on this one and then have something hanging from here. And then I thought about this one and having a tassel made with littler ones of these hanging down and seeing if I could get something to set on those that were small enough that would go with the beach scene. But some more ideas that I have. Uh, my other ones... I plan on doing a lot of different type of things with Palmer clay. Um, there's some fairy houses I want to do. I saw some really neat dragons. I'd like to put my own um, view on it. This one here is Palmer clay and I made that out of a um, cane that was supposed to be the cheetah. Well, it didn't turn out, but I still like the look of it with the um, cabochon. So I went ahead and made the cabochon with it. It needs to be sanded, drilled, and all. Um, here's another one that I made for a cabochon. This one I made to look like bone. And I did some hearts. Here's one I did a uh, leftover pink, white, and red clay. Here's another heart that I like. And then. I saw a tutorial for these, and these are so pretty. I love how they swirl. So this one here has the holes to go along the back. So you can either put it on a chain 
and have the chain come up this way or you can put it through this way and do a wire wrapping on it uh, or something like this on it and I've got these in different sizes they are so pretty but these are just sanded they don't have their final coating on it well this one's not sanded at all so but they still need some work on them and then I also do a little bit of paper crafting um, so I can spread this away here. My paper crafting, this is what they call an explosion box. It was really neat and I thought it was cool. Now this one's not as fancy as the ones that I've seen on the internet and I do plan on upgrading my creativity. But you pull the lid off and it just all falls apart like that. Which is really neat. And then what you have is these panels. This one here is your outer box. This here has a pocket where you can slide something into it. And here's another pocket between the two. Then you have a place here to put a photograph or a note. You have the pocket here. And you have another mat here to put a photo on. Got a pocket right here. And then here you have an area to put a picture or sentiment. And then the inside ones here, they are um, a little different. These two here are fold out or yeah, fold outs of a square where we open it up and you've got the four corners. And then you just fold it back down and you put it away with a little magnet. Now these ones here, I'm going to change, I think, on my next project. Um, I don't like the idea of how these fold in the center. You would have to have little um, smaller pictures or something, or end up having a fold in down the middle of your picture. So I did see another tutorial, and she had it where she folded it up. So this part here folded here, and then this folded over this way, and then this folded down this way. And then you had your clasp your little door. Now this one is done the same way, just a different type of door to open it. And then these ones here are um, come on, open up. Uh, accordions. These fold out, put your pictures here, you got pictures here you can, and you just come back together, oops, backwards, and then this side here is the same thing, it's actually a longer accordion, but I think these would be neat as like little albums around Christmas time, you know get them all filled up with your pictures and everything from last year's Christmas and then have it sitting out on the table with your Christmas projects. Um, this one could be cool for a Valentine's gift or Will You Marry Me gift. I like how it has an open center and you, you could put your jewelry box right down in there for the gift. Um, you can fill the pictures up, mats up, and uh, fill it up with different memories that y'all ha you have before you add ask them to marry you. So also a candy kiss, a giant candy kiss would be good for this one too. This one I call my um, beloved. That's what the paper was called. Beloved. And then we have the lid. There's, and it all fits into a nice little 5x5 five five box. And then I have a project that I just finished. I was on the internet and saw Sarah. She is a multimedia uh, artist and she was making art journals. I think she does one like every year with the people. And I have a thing for snowflakes. I love snowflakes. My favorite color is blue and my favorite type of metal is silver. Even though I use copper more when I white wire wrap. But that's because copper is cheaper than sterling silver. Um, 
So this is like a copycat from hers, but mine is a little different. She put a deer on hers. Here's how it should be. A deer on hers. I was going to put snowmen, but it just didn't look right. I think my page is a little bigger than hers, too. But it's a multimedia. It's snowflake, something I like. And uh, I thought I'd give it a try. I never did an art journal before. It's something for the grandkids to see or something when I get over. I liked it. There's another one that I saw on somebody else's tutorial. I think it was uh, Papercraft and Friends. She did one with the um, branches. And she got actual branches from outside, real small ones. And made this big old scenery with a whole bunch of birds into this forest. I would like to try one like that. Um, some other paper items that I've been doing is these. This is a Valentine's heart. This is actually quilling here. Um, these flowers here I actually bought. I did attempt to make them and they came out alright, but I lose patience really quick on them. I'll probably give them another try later, but no time soon. So, um, Michael's had Recollections coupon 50% off, so I went and I bought just about all the flowers they had. And I got this one done here. They didn't have no red ones, so I did have to special to order those um, on the internet. But this is just a quilling. You got your paper flowers, you got your love here, a little red heart. Open it up. I like to have a liner in my cards. I think it looks much nicer. This is just a uh, typing paper or copy paper, computer paper, just a regular thin one. And then this one here eh, um, has little lambs on it. This uh, stamp set, this, these two come together. There's actually four different stamp sets. You've got your lambs, you've got your bunny rabbits, you've got your mice, and then you've got your puppy dogs. And I got this one done. This is just an embossed folder mat. mat. Um, these all were die cut out. And I stuck them on individually. Oh, excuse me. Which we are finding out that we are not going to be doing much more of that. You'll see in my future cards here. Um, this one here is one I did. Same type of embossing pad. I cut the heart uh, die hard cut the hearts, die cut the love, I colored, or I stamped the um, mice, and then I colored them, dyed colored them, and attached them to those. They got foam backs on them, so does the lambs. Um, what I did find out that is so much better is I was making some Easter cards here, and I think they're cute and everything. I first tri tried it with the, um, foam stamps, or foam, the uh, double stick foam to put behind so that they would sit up off the, um, title, and that took a long time, and it was a little frustrating, and then I watched a tutorial, and they did layers of the same letter, and then they put the pattern paper on the top, like this one. And they glued all those layers together and uh, put it on that way. Well, that one was st still pretty messy like this one here. I didn't care for that idea. And then I saw another tutorial and they used fun foam to go underneath to raise it. So you got two, two, two uh, times through the dye machine. You do one in your paper, pattern paper, and then you did one the um, fun foam, glued it on, piece of cake. We'll do more like that. We are going to invest into some script letters and script titles, dies. Now this one here is one. I got the stamp from Hobby Lobby's. It's a little bunny rabbit. 
um, the layout for this pattern I did get on the internet um, but I stamped the little bunnies it takes two of them to do each one um, unfortunately I did have to cut his head off so I cut his head off I put double foam tape underneath this part and then I took glue for the second part and glued it onto the bunny so you can't tell that I cut his head off that way it gave me some dimension and then I was looking at um, Happy Easter sentiments. I did uh, stamp a bunch and cut out a bunch. But then I got to thinking that, you know, he looks pretty serious. Or he looks like he's really, really thinking about something. So I was thinking about maybe making them into um, thinking of you cards. Um, sympathy cards. Hello cards. So, I mean, there's a lot of ideas in there, so I held back on putting the Happy Easter signs on them. Uh, go through what I do have. I don't have much, but eventually I will, I hope. So that was my idea on those. And then this one here, I saw this at Michael's. This is a Recollections stamp set, or sticker set. You got the two bunnies, two lambs, two eggs, perfect for Easter. So I went ahead and bought a couple of those packages. And then I found a template, an embossing template, that has the cross on it. And it's made from the different words. From joy, Savior, peace, Jesus, grace. No. Oh. That would be a great Easter, and I thought something like that would be neat. And if I uh, distressed it, so I covered the whole thing in distress ink. Then I spritzed it. No, I. What did I do on that? Okay, I embossed it. And then I covered it with a distress ink, and see how you still have the white spots in here. That's where it didn't go all the way down. So then I went back to that, and I used a um, gold ink, ink pad. This one's actually Versamark, but anyways, I went over the top of it, but it kept on going down in between the letters. I wanted just the letters to be done. So then I tried another one. And this is one that I saw on the internet. Well, I found out that you can't do this technique with distress inks. So, I didn't like how it... The ink went onto the paper. Looks really sloppy. But when I rubbed it, it came out a little bit better. But you still get the gold in between. I've seen it on the internet, and they've done it before just doing the top layer. So then this one here, I covered the whole thing in distress inks, darkened the edges, had the middle lighter, um, embossed it, and then what I did was I put the uh, Versa mask, Versa mask and tapped the tapped it off so that I don't, hopefully I was only getting the words and then I covered it with clear embossing powder, or not clear, gold embossing powder, and I got this. So it's still stuck to certain areas in the background. Some areas it didn't even cover the whole thing. So I wasn't happy about that. So then I tried this one. And that is about the closest to what I'm trying to get, except I don't want the gold down here between everything. And then you put the lamb on it, and I thought that would be just adorable. Sweet. What I was raised that Easter supposed to be. And then I thought, well, that's kind of dark for that. So I tried a lighter one. Uh, I actually like the darker one better, 
with it. So we will be doing the darker one once I get this figured out. And then, uh, I tried different techniques, different rubs. I used the pearl rubs on it. I used like a dry brush on some of them. And then I even went and bought the rub and buff to do that. And that's what's on these ones. And then this particular one here has glossy accents on it. Um, I'm liking this. I just don't, I think it's too dark, maybe. Oh, maybe not out of the craft paper. But I'm trying it with different papers and tech, you know, kind of the same technique, but idea. But I do like that with that. I just got to figure out how to make my letters gold. So, we're still working on those ideas. I'm wanting maybe a thinner embossing. That's my next try is a thinner embossing powder. So... We are working on those ideas still for cards, and that I think they'd also be good sympathy cards too. Well, <clears throat> that's all I have to show you right now, I think, and uh, I will be making more videos. Um, they probably will be more into watching me. I don't talk that much to while I'm working. They say I do. I talk to myself all the time, but we'll see. We'll give it a try. Um, also, check out my website. Most of the stuff I make is for sale on my webpage. That's called Kilburn's Creations. Creations is with a K, not a C, and uh, dot com. It's all one word and no apostrophes. Kilburnscreations.com. My um, email address is there. So if you want to get a hold of me directly or comment on my YouTube pages. And we will soon be having a whole bunch of fun. Thank you very much.